All right, very good. Here we go. I will call the meeting for Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. Presenting County Commissioners to order. Uh, let us start again by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together uh, to represent Seneca County uh, to discuss uh, county business. Uh, we ask that you uh, look over uh, all our citizens, especially those who have uh, lost some family members, uh, we know some personally, and that um, you, know, you continue to uh, bless this great community we live in. Amen. Amen. Roll call, Mrs. Wilson. Commissioner Kirshner. I am here. Mr. Cody so. Here. Mr. Shelf. Here. Okay. I will accept a motion to approve the digital audio video recording of the previous board session that was held last Thursday, July 15th. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, I guess we need another roll call. Commissioner Shelf. Yes. Commissioner Cody so. Yes. Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. Well, in respect for the mayor's time, I think we're going to put him on first. Okay, so, I appreciate uh, that. You can stay for the rest or not stay yeah. for the rest. I want to figure out how this all works. <laughs> uh, Mayor Scott Harrison from the village of Bettsville. I appreciate the time, the commissioner's Thanks. time today. Yeah, good morning. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. And the reason I wanted to uh, present my, my concerns and issues with the village, uh, last Saturday we had this major rainfall and we had this major flood event within our village. And I really think it's a dish issue because I know they've cleaned the ditches up upstream from Bettsville. And this this week I kind of walked around and, and looked at all the ditches in, in town. I, I don't really think we have enough capacity with the ditches, well, with the water coming in. Either we've got to widen the ditches or we're going to have to look at another option, maybe putting diverting the water or something over Wolf Creek from right there in Route 12 across 12 and going across that way or something because there's just so much water coming down. If you look at the size of the ditch coming into the community versus what's in the community and, and after this community, the roof, well, Creek, there's just, it's like almost a factor of two the size mm -hmm. of the world. And they clean the, the Perry, Perry's Lynch uh, ditch out and all that stuff and all, all the extra water is coming to the community now. So it created a major event for a lot of my citizens in the community. So I'd like to at least have the commissioner look into. This is the first one you've had? Well, actually, that's, that's, the, the, that's the, third, the third event yeah. <clears throat> in uh, okay. the last 10 years. So, I, you know, and it just got worse. And cleaning the creek really helped, but the water really moved, which I had to close on uh, Township Road 36 and stuff, too, because water was moving so fast. And that was like almost three days before it got down where it was safe to drive on again. So I just wanted to, you know, bring it to the county's uh, interest so they can see what we can do about it, or what we can do. And I got some pictures here I want to yeah. just show you. These are not very many, but it's just a, a few of the water. And, you know, basically, <coughs> Route 4 was shut down for almost 24 hours. And so I got a whole of old dot, et cetera, to uh, resolve that. <clears throat> so in advance of this meeting, uh, I contacted Beth Deeds. I understand okay. her office called John. Uh, John, um, Beth uh, oversees the ditches, okay. and drainage. And she's on vacation this week, okay. but, but we'll contact you next week okay. when she gets back. Um, so. I think maybe a conversation there with all the parties and then meets. Oh, I do. Some place to try to come up with, yeah, you know, if there's anything that can be done. And right. I think that's where we would start. I agree. I mean, I, I, um, I don't expect a solution today. I, I, you know, yeah. So well, I'm glad you came in. Um, yeah, I don't really have any other comments unless you do. Uh, the commissioners, but no, I, I think you know we leave yeah. it, we, we try to make sure the ditches are good, and right. like, we leave it to the professionals. And I'm right. sure that Beth will have That's some comment or some remedy. The right. question is, what's the cost? And yeah, all those things I understand there's, there's yeah. a lot of cost involved in what you do. So, is there a culvert that goes on that it goes well, through a culvert? Well, well I think that's the problem. Big, big, bigger, about, well, I don't know. You have well, probably three major restrictions within the community. Okay. Because the railroad bridge and, and the water comes in, there's a couple of smaller bridges and stuff, and I think that's part of the problem. Plus, all the property owners would have the effect as well of trying to clean the ditch and stuff, right? So, yeah. I mean, it becomes a big political issue, I'm sure, once you get into something like that. But, um, I have to look at some other It doesn't help that uh, 
some of your money was taken away from you. Well, I know so that, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, that could have been used for some of this, yeah, or you know, match that. or some sort of. Right, right. I appreciate um, that. But I think, you know, yeah, assess the situation, okay. get some options, and okay. let us know what they are. Yeah. If we can help, we'll help. Well, we'll talk to Beth next week and start on that solution. See what her her thoughts are, and then we'll see what we can do. And then I come back and present something else to the commissioners. But I appreciate your time today. Part. Yeah. 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 Would the county engineer have any suggestions or ideas on? I think you just have to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, there's a the large rate of that. I mean, I understand. Private that. owners. <clears throat> you know, it's, and I think a lot of the, uh, the way through experience is that a lot of the way the, the culverts and everything is always sized is basically like a two inch rain event over 24 hours. Right. You have four or five, six inches in a short period of time. I and mean, we've had situations out in townships, same thing happened, they oh, yeah. ditches and, oh, you yeah. know, the same amount of water is going through, but now right. it's going through faster. So right. on it. it's kind yeah. of a double edged sword sometimes when you do yeah. uh, clean the. Uh, yeah, when you, you get know, that really big rain. Big rain and stuff yeah. on that, yeah. that's what makes it, but, uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, Good opportunity to, to look at everything. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your effort. Your yeah, we appreciate today. you coming yeah. to us. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you Mary. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Sandusky County never followed through with a Wolf Creek clean out going north. Okay. That's and we had sent them a letter when we started our project for Wolf Creek. Um, but I don't know if Sandusky County ever followed through. So I think the concerns right. at Bettsville at that time right. would be that, you know, yes, Seneca County needed our portion needed done. Obviously, this was a 30 year project, yeah. um, but they were concerned since the water flows north um, that Sandusky County would, may need to move forward with theirs too. But I don't I don't know that they had ever done that. We had sent a letter said, you know, we would recommend looking at this but maybe say something to Beth can yeah. they have not so it's I mean it's, that's part of the problem right okay. so we do increase the water flow coming to the city but it can't get away so yeah or village excuse me <coughs> Wolf Creek up these into the river there someplace south of 12 uh, it, uh, it goes in the river north of 12 branched with the east and it's, it's quite south of 12 yeah, yeah. 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 just, just yeah. south there yeah, yeah. okay Yes, Jim. I think John Spar had something kind of related to this. I'm going to put him on the screen. Okay. <clears throat> yes, John. Hi, John. Good morning, commissioners. And uh, uh, Mayor Bestville. Um, Scott, we have some, um, and I put this information out through Jimmy and through um, some of the other uh, media sources that we had these available. Um, I have 19 uh, quick <laughs> cleanup kits. <clears throat> Uh, that were put together by the United Church of Christ Northwest Ohio Association and then donated to us. We have them here available for anyone. Uh, they include uh, a household buckets, some uh, garbage bags, a metal wire, uh, wire, wire hand brush, and a regular hand brush, and a sponge, and some bleach cleaner, and rubber gloves, you know, like um, uh, dishwashing gloves uh, for people who have to, you know, clean up some of their flood stuff. Uh, uh, at this point, that's uh, about all we can uh, we can do. Um, uh, obviously, um, people are welcome to give us a call. We'll get them out to them, or they can come pick them up sure. uh, anytime. Oh, we appreciate uh, that. Yeah. yeah. So please, uh, if you get that information out, and, and I'm thinking that this is something that we'll probably keep uh, doing in the future ourselves. So um, when these run out, we'll start to put them back together as we're in the flood season. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. Okay. Do we have an administrator's report today? I oh, just have a couple things. Just wanted to give you an update. Let me pull up my quote here. Um, the second squad at uh, the Bascom Station, uh, Squad 202, um, it actually seized on a scene. We got the second squad there. Patients were taken care of. That wasn't a problem. Uh, took it to uh, be a D diesel, and they said the motor is done. Estimated cost is about twenty-three thousand to replace it. Um, I've looked at vehicles for the same age range, uh, gut deals, different things, and vehicles of that age range aren't even selling for ten thousand. Um, so my recommendation is to not put. Uh, $23,000 into this 2005 ambulance and just um, start having uh, our maintenance 
take out all the equipment and uh, get it listed for what we can on gov deals. So the second squad will not be going back to Bascom. So I let Kim know yesterday, but um, I figured I'd let you guys know today. That's a lot of money for a vehicle that's wouldn't be worth it. So is there anything in our quote unquote fleet that could replace that vehicle? Well, they still have their 201 squad, their main squad, their 202 squad is pretty much out of service most of the time. Okay. So um, it, it, it's not really needed at this time. Uh, the squad's out of service, so. Did we get our new vehicle in September, October, hopefully? Did we have, were we gonna discard one or can we rotate? Will we have a backup? Uh, we currently have a backup 801, 801 which is, is the BD exact used. same make, model, year, um, which b and Diesel had it over for maintenance, and it's starting the same leak. So we may have two. Uh, it's a backup. He said go ahead and drive it. Next time they get it into maintenance, they will look at it further. It's just our backup, so there may be two trucks that we go down. Um, and we... we okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, so there may be two uh, trucks down. Yeah, so it <laughs> sounds at some point we may need to buy another vehicle. Yes. Yeah, and yep. I think Ken wants to get them all the back ends all the same anyhow. Right. right. And so yep. I believe we're only one vehicle away from that. Right. that and, and, um, and I know we're going to discuss, you know, different things going forward with uh, the different spots that we have in yeah, place. Right. So, so, um, we so we're okay for now, yes. I think. Yes. Especially in the fact that we're in these yep. uh, ongoing yep. big picture discussions. Right. Yeah. So I, I think they're, they're 201 squad. They got it maintenance done. They got that backup camera issue solved. So they have their, their main squad back. Um, mm -hmm. They're finishing up the last couple squads on our maintenance. And um, so we do have the backup. So if the backup is needed somewhere, we do have it. And um, we actually used uh, Attica Squad because they were listed out of service. So we were doing maintenance on a couple vehicles. So we used Attica Squad. We let them know. But um, so just wanted to make sure you guys knew what was going on. It had went down. And uh, that's. It was leaking oil. Yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. Kinda... Yeah. And it went down fast. So that's why we're a little concerned with the backup. But. Um, Okay. So uh, just to let you know on that one, um, I did get a request from uh, Attica uh, Fair. Um, the they are requesting. Let me find the letter. Um, yeah, due to COVID, we are asking for uh, thirty-three hundred and any additional funds you would be willing to give to help offset, uh, you know, some of their lack of income and everyday upkeep and expenses. Um, Prior to April of this year, um, our required uh, contribution to the fairs were the Seneca County Fair was $2,800 and the uh, Independent Fair was $800. Legislation did change in April, which I think Seneca has already sent us their bill and we've already paid it, but legislation's changed, so everything's pretty much doubled that we're required to send them now. Um, and Attica had sent me their invoice and the new legislation, um, which, so theirs will be, I think with their new cost, 1600 that they that will be giving them annually as a required amount. Um, the, the request for the 3300 I think came right, right before um, they got that legislation, so they were asking if there was anything additional you'd be willing to give. Um, to help them out um, for the 2021 year. So is this a justifiable expense of the relief plan? Yes, um, I spoke to Julie about it the other day uh, when we had our uh, reporting meeting. Uh, obviously, our side of the the, the expense, the 1600 that we would have to pay, is the general fund because right. that would be a normal expense. But anything that you would decide um, above and beyond that, we could use out of the ARP funding. I have two questions. Oh, okay, so did the fares receive a number of 50,000? Remember that you worked on that last year? Mm -hmm. but that I don't think the independent fund. fair got anything. 
There was yeah, a fair mess that maybe yeah, we there tried was a, They got a number if they didn't have a fair, they got a number if they did have a right. fair. And somehow the paperwork got screwed up. I don't remember fears. what that number was. I think twenty-five thousand if they did, and fifty thousand if they didn't. Yeah, um, Bill, do you remember? Yep. I know you're part of the fair. Yeah, was it fifty? Yeah, I think they had it. Yeah. yeah. And then, if, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. That yeah. Was yeah, I know Seneca County did, but did right. Attic could get it as well. I wonder. I'm not sure about what. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about not, that. Not to the matters. Yeah, but that was but for I, 2020. But that was for last year. Okay. Yes. And then Audrey, just when we opened up. For nonprofits and uh, <coughs> and museums and everybody to apply, maybe they would. Have, they might have been eligible. Mm -hmm. I would say they didn't apply. They, I should know this. They Are they a 501c3 or? Yeah, they had the Independent. How they would fall under being an independent? I'm not sure what type of entity they are. Yeah, if they I were a bit I think it's just all right. Uh, like government point. agency. Yeah. It's kind of like. Uh, Resort so gov yeah, government I think you're right. agency so I don't, wouldn't be eligible. It's, not it's an independent fair. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. just something to park in your for future yeah. to clarify because yeah, it just depends what type of entity they are, which I'm not sure. Okay, we can check in the future. So, so we know that it's eligible under the uh, American Relief Plan, and uh, uh, the request is 3,300. I'll make a motion. Okay, we'll second the motion. All right. Any additional Any discussion? No. Let's go ahead. I do have one. I'm sorry. One more question. You said income replacement. Aren't we into a aggregate discussion on income replacement? Is this, uh, this I mean, that's fit? just what was in their letter. We, just, we wouldn't. We don't even. We can just do it. Yeah, we wouldn't use so that it's not stipulation. Yeah. yeah. He he just yeah he just said you know they were down that's at that income. Request. Yeah, that was just because that in the purest sense, it's we would have to do something different. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I'm right. with it. the right. only other the only thing that I would add is we might respond to them that um, uh, they may want to look at their financials um, and not promising any more money. But if uh, if there is some reserve left with the rescue plan and they qualify, we may consider something in the future uh, because I know that you know we're going to go through with Mr. Dill and everyone about what does qualify and what doesn't qualify. We know this does. Yeah. Um, and I don't, again, I don't want to give any false hope, but on the same token, I would say, you know, don't be shy about making a request. We can always say no. So, uh, yeah, and I feel for them. They're independent, and so they're not a, they may just be in some category that, you know, doesn't qualify for all this, federal, you know, because they're not a, I don't know what they are. But anyhow, let's let's do this. So we have a, we have a motion and a second. Yeah, we do. No other discussion. Mrs. Wilson. Uh, Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Cardiso. Yes. Commissioner Shaw. Yes. Good. Okay. And Jimmy, can I ask you to do me a favor? Yeah. Um, can you look? Somebody dropped off a bid, but it's not on our calendar. Um, it's for the crossway. Can you check a resolution to see? I did see that. On Stace, what was the exact amount for, for the fair? Uh, that they asked 3, for? 3,300. 3,300. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, I guess I wasn't expecting it because it wasn't on the calendar. Did we already have a bid for? Uh, we did, and then we rejected the bids ah. because they were way above the uh, the grant amount that they were allowed. Okay. So they we they um, took some stuff off, reconfigured it, had their engineer look at it again. So they put the bid out, and we did set a new time and date. Um, but it's not on the calendar. It is okay. July 22nd at our so office. So it would be, um, we'll look and see if she has any others out there. Good catch. Is that a 1030 bid opening? Um, is it scheduled for tonight? Yeah. You just don't have it on here. Yeah, it was published. It was in the newspaper. Um, just didn't. It was not on our calendar. I just found that in my notes. I didn't have the time down. Um, um, 
Sorry about this. Well, let's, to be safe, let's wait till 10.30. Yeah. Uh, so, um, let me see, what else did I have? Uh, just a quick update. I, I think you guys all received a letter from um, Judge Meyer. Um, he, the youth center has been having issues with their staffing. Um, it, you know, it, it's probably been before COVID, but COVID did not did not help the situation. Um, she actually had just hired four four new people. They were gone within a week. Uh, you know, just the, the, they don't know if they just don't know what they're getting into when they go in there. I mean, it's it's like go, we're going to work at the jail. Um, so they're struggling getting um, <coughs> employees. They have started a uh, incentive, like a hiring bonus, uh, trying to get people in. So uh, all of this was in the letter. They said, um, judge is saying uh, August 6th, um, they're authorizing a $2 increase hourly rate for the center staff and an increase in the new hire rate of $2 an hour. Um, they have the funding in their current budget for 2021. Obviously, it'll have to be a discussion in 2022. Right. Um, but that their their starting pay out there is only um, 14.50 an hour, so they're going to take it up to 16.50 to see if that helps. So the judge did call in advance of a letter coming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. They did. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So you know, and uh, the uh, that part of Common Police has been very fiscally responsible through the years. So I am. Uh, I believe that they've got a proper retaining folks and uh, yeah. we're in the process of kind of doing salary surveys across the county. And, and Jamie uh, Wolf, our HR director, she did do, she put that ahead because her and Sarah, the director out there, have been trying to work on this, trying to work on a plan. Yes. And she had done a salary survey. She did that one first because Sarah was having issues and we are one, one of the lowest. Yeah. So, um, you know, 1650 will get us not quite to the mid-range, but at it's least not, in starting pay. It's not Cedar Point money. It's not Cedar Point money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know. Yes, I agree. Hopefully this makes a difference. Do you know if uh, they're working with Carol at all? She might have some things that could help them out. Um, I know they put it on Ohio Means Jobs. I don't know if they've been working directly with Carol or not. Okay. Um, I can mention to Carol to reach out to them. So okay. If there's anything else she has that they might be able to utilize. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these, these, no, these are real issues. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are real issues because the judge was they might have had to close it. Yeah, it, it, it's that serious. So yeah. I I support. We have to get good people. Right. We have to pay them more. Right. That says commissioners as we go into next year's budget. Yeah. We're going to feel this, you know, from the sheriff to every department right and, and, so, we, and it's a, it's okay but we have to something has right. to give you know or we yeah. just have to work through it but that and, is and the contracts we currently have contracts in place with uh, Crawford County Wyandotte County so um, you know Sarah did mention I don't know if the judge mentioned in his letter but obviously they're gonna look at the look at the contract too pass some of yes yeah. yep to help offset that cost yeah, like the jail cool. and those things but yeah. it's still it's still pressure on the budget yep it's brittle out there you don't want to have the people that we have working out there now all quitting at the same uh, time I, they're getting, I think they're getting burned out yeah well even the new people i just don't think they know what they to expect when they go out there and you know it's, that, it's yeah. Yeah. shock yeah it's a shock they think oh they just go out and work with kids and you know not so much. Not so much, maybe. <laughs> Takes a special person. I couldn't do it. Uh, I give them a lot of credit for doing what they do. And uh, so Sarah's done, doing a good job out there. What's Sarah's uh, last name? Sarah Canales. Teresa, do you have anything to add to this conversation? Oh, yeah, she is online, I think. I see she's on mute. Okay, she. There she's on. Good morning. How are you doing? Wonderful. So yeah, um, I really don't have anything to add. I know it's been a little problem, so. Do we think that the main, I mean, I, we think that one of the major problems is salary, but do we yeah. think that is the main problem or is there any other underlying concerns about employee hiring and retention at Crossway? 
The main problem is salary, and also you know, when you have like shifts, you know, you know, a lot of people don't like to work, you know, second, third shifts, but that's the nature of having a detention center. And um, I do pe think people are unaware of what they're getting into, you know, when they go into the facility. These are young people that have, you know, at risk uh, issues, and it's sometimes difficult, you know, for people to, to work in that. Salary is a big thing. Some shift things is a big thing. Of course, you know, the economy and jobs right now is also, right now it doesn't seem like, it's so hard for everybody to get employment right now. Is, is there any shift in numbers? Is there any shift differential? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. Okay. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but I do, I do know that it is. It's not a lot like, it's like 25, 50 cents, something like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Teresa, when we um, have these people or individuals that quit or step down, um, do we conduct exit interviews or to see what the reasoning is? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, another job, higher paying, yeah. you know. They do. They do try to find out, you know, what's going on. Um, I, I talked to Sarah recently, and uh, there was somebody left her. They went to a, a Marion facility, and were being paid, you know, like six dollars more an hour. Wow. So, yeah, I think that was an adult facility, though. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. You're welcome. Okay. I think that's all I have for my reports. All right. I'll quit giving you bad news. Yeah. <laughs> Or at least it is that cost you money. Commissioner <laughs> Shop, what do you got? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a very busy week, but very productive. Um, so last week, I met with uh, the dog board and the Humane Society over the past few years. I think there's been some miscommunications between the two departments. So we sat down in the room, um, got all the uh, involved individuals together, sat down, discussed our different roles, how we can collaborate together. But what we're going to do is try to educate the public better, sit down put a pamphlet together, get this out in the news, but have the roles of the dog warden, the roles of the Humane Society. Uh, they do very similar things, but sometimes there's uh, some miscommunication, uh, some uh, mislaps of uh, different roles. So we're trying to work on that and how they can work together. Um, also, I had a meeting with TSEP this week. We're working on a potential website um, update with possibly the city, the county, um, TSEP, Chamber, Visitors Bureau, something that's a little more easy to use, a one-stop shop potentially where you can get a permit for this or uh, figure out the phone number for that or basically have a one-stop shop for uh, all the different entities and municipalities here in Seneca County. So we're just beginning those discussions, but it's all pretty productive and upbeat. Um, we also had a meeting out the public safety uh, building this, uh, this week, uh, Homeland Security uh, type of issues, but uh, had the police departments, the sheriffs out there, the fire, hospitals, basically just discussing emergency mm -hmm. uh, planning, that sort of thing. LAPC. LAPC, thank, yep. thank you. <laughs> emergency Planning Commission, yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, also, tomorrow we have the uh, Launch Foss Story of Finals for the uh, business competition we're putting on, so we'll have a winner, possibly two out of that. You can show up to that event. It is open to the public. You can come vote. They are doing a public vote, which I think will be uh, kind of interesting. We also had an investment committee meeting this week. Um, also wanted to congratulate Daniel Park with her opening of Every Stitch. She does uh, custom uh, seamstress work, mending alterations, that sort of thing. Also, as far as our uh, Light Up Seneca County Blue campaign goes, we are getting the lights out as soon as we can. Um, we had an overwhelming response in the first week. I think we had 100 go out, so there's some lights on back order. Be patient. Um, I think the plan is to get them out to the Sheriff's Department and Police Station so people can pick them up, but those are on back order. so. Uh, be patient with us and uh, we'll get those out to you as soon as we can. Also, we announced the uh, Seneca County Brewery Tour here just yesterday. Um, I know during COVID, Bliss Charters got hit especially hard, the busing service in Fostoria. They were completely shut down, couldn't do any sort of busing routes, anything like that. So, working with them and then also getting the Fostoria Chamber and Tiffin Chamber together, uh, they're setting up kind of like a uh, taste of Seneca County. If you're into breweries and want to try it, uh, the bus service will take you where you need to go and uh, don't have to worry about anything like that, but the different establishments will be having live music, food, trucks, so I think that'll be a neat event. Also, uh, let's see here, I had a couple more things. Wanted to say, uh, keep the Reno family uh, in your thoughts and prayers. Um, we just lost a really good person yesterday and a dear friend of mine, but um, uh, just want to say, uh, keep keep the Reno family in your thoughts and prayers. And then lastly, um, can't 
totally confirm this yet, but the uh, the gator that was in the Sandusky River, they believe they caught it. So. Um, Are you joking? You, you either caught it or you didn't. They, 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 <laughs> they would know if they caught it. <laughs> <laughs> it's more likely that a John Deere eater would be in that river right. than yeah. actual. It wasn't a pair of Crocs floating down the river. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, so OD, ODNR, they, uh, from what I'm hearing, they, 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 they yeah. caught it. So um, I'll confirm that next week. But I just want to end on a positive note. <laughs> Tourism is about it's, uh, it's safe to kayak and canoe again in the river. So. <laughs> That's that's all I have for today, so I think that's about enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Perry B. I only have twenty seconds, okay. You got all you need. You know, the downtown event of Fostoria, I was over uh, in Renee's office, FEDC yesterday, and she said one of the contestants took out a billboard. Vote for it. I mean oh, really? this is a big thing for tomorrow night. This should be pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, so that's kinda neat. Um, have, did they start a little league or a football team over there this year yet? Or is that in the we're working. Next? We're working on it for next season. Okay, just one. I was down at the park. I saw the kids playing. It was kind of neat. It's getting closer. Uh, a few comments. The uh, we uh, are going to have a land bank meeting next week, and Ann Goon, our new. Uh, uh, health department uh, director will be joining the board of the land bank. So we think that's that's very positive. Um, we actually work with uh, the health department. The land bank works with the health department in uh, condemning and, and taking down plighted houses and, and, and so forth. So we're looking forward to having her on our board. Yes. What's but, the date and time of that? It's a uh, Tuesday. It's Tuesday, uh, two o'clock maybe. Mm -hmm. Next week. Sometimes eleven, sometimes two. <coughs> yeah. uh, and all the meetings are live or in person. So any any board that needs to make a decision is in person. So looking forward to that. Yes, we did have an investment committee meeting. Uh, that, I think that went well. Um, the townships are uh, have received money. Uh, and we're going to have, uh, this might be a good time for uh, Mike Ditto's sure. check, if that's okay, Commissioner, we'll tie yeah. that in. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Mike, would you like to give us an update? You're out there. Hello, Commissioners, how are you? Good morning, Mr. Good, yes. good morning. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having us on. So, um, we will be uh, coming up your way, uh, coming up on August 10th. Uh, we're looking forward to that, uh, to talk to you, and we're hopeful to have some folks from the Township Association join us to talk about uh, some of the funding and other things coming out of Washington and at the state level to, to answer some of those questions, and also talk about some priorities for the county going into the second half of the legislative session this year. Um, as you know, there's been a lot of back and forth uh, over the last several months with the coronavirus relief dollars uh, that have been coming up and there's been um, unexpected changes from the federal government and from the state level that have occurred in the last couple of weeks which we've which we've shared um, happy to elaborate on those as you need but we are also looking forward to to coming up on the 10th and, and having a more robust discussion about all of it of course yeah, I think, uh, you know, the idea that it's great, we're, we're glad to have you, and uh, I'm sure the townships will be glad to have you as well to talk about what we can and can't do, or at least some ideas about that. But as important, the, the meeting earlier to talk about preemptively uh, what might be in the capital budget for 2022 and what we might do to prepare for that, not only on the county level, but maybe on the township level as well uh, for some projects that we have. That, that's exactly right. We We've talked to a number of legislators in both the House and the Senate, and they are anticipating a capital budget uh, that will be starting conversations on that very, very soon. So I think it is a good idea for us to start talking about what those priorities are. Uh, it's undetermined yet, and it won't be until probably the fall as to how much money will be allocated for that capital budget. But if history is any indication, it is probably statewide, roughly 150 to $160 million for community-related projects. Those can be projects uh, for this next one that would build on ones uh, like Opportunity Park, perhaps, or others that you, you see fit. 
Uh, so we'll have a conversation about those to, to see where we land. But uh, those conversations are uh, unbelievably starting now uh, yeah. for a budget that is likely to be passed later this year. So we're looking forward to that as well. Well, the good yeah, the good news is is that we are involved in these discussions early and we have never been in the past. And the better news is is that we realize that the further you might be along with the project from a standpoint of planning or actual architectural drawings or you know close to the shovel, uh, the better chances are that it will be approved. Uh, to, uh, Mike, in the past, so this will be our first meeting, okay, right, to kind of begin a brain dump on a list and conversations. But in the past, we had Representative Reinecke, and in this case, Click, and maybe Senator Reinecke, because some of the projects could include surrounding areas, right? Sandusky County, Senate County, that kind of thing. Do we, right. do we need them at this first go around, or uh, they would come in maybe uh, before, uh, you know, before October, let's say? Yeah, great, great question. I think it might be a good idea to uh, not necessarily have them at this first meeting, only so you can, as a group, in put together what you think will be the priorities uh, and sort of organize those and kind of gather your thoughts on that, and then we can put some things together. I certainly think it would be wise to have both Senator Ryan Keene and Representative Click there shortly thereafter, after the three of you uh, gather up your priorities and start talking to them. Uh, and about what your, your top one or two or three things may be. Uh, it always is an interesting scenario, as you well know, uh, particularly for uh, Senator Reinecke and previously for Senator Burke, um, when they have a multi-county, six or seven county district, uh, there will be lots of demands on those. We want to get in as early as we can. Uh, and with, with uh, Representative Click having two counties, uh, we want to be, you know, cognizant of that as well. So anything that we can do on the front end and have them come just a little bit after this first meeting, I think will be really helpful. Well, the major difference with the other counties is they don't have you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. I, 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 you're right. Job security. <laughs> So uh, that's right. That's right. So we will uh, we will offline get together on um, the timing of your visit, the agenda, the uh, who will be right. here, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You are prepared to attend the township meeting uh, at uh, five thirty. The formal meetings at six thirty. Right. Yeah. Um, so you are prepared to go to that, but you're also prepared to have conversation yes. here prior to that. Okay, we'll, we'll work correct. that all out. Yeah, both both Ben Gross and I will be there for that. Okay, great. So that's good to know. The um, so to pivot on broadband, just to put a maybe an umbrella over everything. One of the topics that the trustee, these townships that have received. A uh, substantial amount of money. One of the eligible uses is broadband. Okay, and I've been making my rounds. Uh, was at Liberty, Jackson, Scipio, Eden, Clinton Township this past week alone, and they're all uh, very interested in, in the converse, conversation. The big conversation: What can we do with the money? Dot dot dot, um, and a broadband conversation. So. Uh, we have been approached for several months about what are you going to do with broadband, what's the commissioner's stance. Mm -hmm. We've been working behind the scenes to try to uh, frame up our position, uh, i.e. Uh, maybe conduct a study in the county. So we're working with uh, NC OES, let's see, uh, NCO ESC. 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 <laughs> I knew it wasn't right. So thank you. <laughs> Guy, the, crossword, the crossword puzzle guy. Here. <laughs> uh, I'm working with them, David, Zach, and, and uh, regional planning. So we have a, a meeting next week, but then we have a, a meeting now set or being set for later in the month where uh, I believe it's 10 or 11 providers, right? That kind of number of, uh, I call it internet service, but. Um, there are a lot of providers in the county, they will be coming to the meeting. So this will all kind of start to take a big county uh, view, you know, and our job is is just 
we just want to make uh, the county friendly, user friendly to do business and support whatever we can. Um, but I think, and I'm hopeful that there'll be a you know, positive impact in the end, because that could really make a difference um, out in, in rural Santa County. Yeah. It's exciting. It could be huge, oh. yeah. So, well, you know, it's gonna take a couple months, but we're all, with you coming up on the 10th, I think that's that's very, very timely. Okay, so I'll just and leave it there. Go ahead, Mike. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to that, and that that is your your spot on with uh, the conversation around broadband. It is becoming a almost a bigger issue by the day, not only because of the federal money that's been allocated for it, but there's also been money allocated at the federal level for schools, and there's been then uh, at the state level, the state budget uh, authorized two hundred fifty million dollars in broadband grants. Uh, over the next two years through the Ohio Department of Development. So there is a there's a lot happening on this money, issue. Yeah. Uh, Spencer and I are actually meeting next week. Uh, I believe it's on Wednesday with Broadband Ohio, uh, which is one of the executive agencies. We're talking to the executive director there uh, so that we can share some information uh, from them for you as well. So uh, we will certainly have that on the 10th for that meeting too. You know, if the townships could get together and put up a Put up a big number is that local match that that always helps as well so it does um, sure. and then finally uh, uh, to, to mention ems uh, we've had there's there's a lot of uh, discussion and a lot of meetings um, and uh, we're looking forward to our meeting on august 4th that will be at fifth fifth, fifth. fifth. i always say fourth it's the fifth. I have to look at Commissioner Kirshner. Again. Where's it at? NC. OESC. OESC. And uh, that'll be at NC OESC. And that'll be at uh, 7 o'clock. So there'll be a, we have an EMS meeting then. Uh, Mayor will be there. Uh, Mayor Anderson from Bettsville. And then we'll have a meeting in the 10th out here as well. Would you say the 5th at 7? At 7, yes. Thursday. Uh, that's all uh, and the fair opening is at eight o'clock Monday uh, I plan on being there uh, Veterans Day yep it's it's always nice to be out there for the opening of the fair and uh, we're looking forward to it that uh, it is gonna be a great week uh, bid opening let's get to that since we're a little past 1030 yep and it was 1030 I found the right solution can we do that bid we only have one Chris, this remember, how many did we have the first time? Do you remember? Was it three? Uh, no, we only had one. One left, okay. I think it was one. Yeah. One. All right. Um, and actually, I don't know if it's the same company. This is from Telemon Construction. Yeah. Same company. Um, and the way they put this together, I don't have the engineer's estimate. Um, I'll have to look it up. Uh, but the proposal, um, they have some alter alternates in here so the base proposal for the general trade works was two hundred twenty six thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars two two six nine one seven point zero zero um we have some additional alternates um alternate one four thousand fifty six dollars alternate two uh, two thousand eight hundred seventy two dollars alternate three uh, six thousand eight hundred ninety dollars um, alternate four hundred eleven thousand four hundred thirty one dollars alternate five uh, twenty four thousand thirty two dollars alternate six thirty seven dollars or thirty seven thousand eight hundred forty five dollars and then alternate seven, uh, $45,734. I think what they did is kind of kept the same projects, revaluated them and made them as alternates so they could stay within the requirement of the grant. Um, 
Yeah, so she has about two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars worth of ordinance there. Yeah. Yep. And then add that to the base bid. Um, a couple of them are different painting options. One's replacing vinyl. Another painting scope. Exterior doors. Doors. Hardwares. Um, electrical plumbing so they have different capital projects going on so I will get this to um, Jason Varney at Crossway and they will review it with their engineers and they will get back to us Very good. thank you okay uh, then we can move on to new business okay. Okay, I have one supplemental request bring it up here Speaking of Wolf Creek. Oh, uh, Wolf Creek, yep. See it on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you need an additional $916.31 into the other expense line, and this is to pay for the, um, they've done the settlement, and these are the settlement fees. Uh, just forgot it in the budget when they put it in. This is for first half, so I'm sure they're going to have to set us another supplemental for second half. Uh, nine hundred and sixteen dollars and thirty one cents and then I have, um, I have a resolution appointing Jamie Wolf as the loss control coordinator for Seneca County um, it was Kylie since she has been here but since um, part of Jamie's role is to take over you know the courses the subco uh, different insurance um, the county's required uh, to appoint a loss control coordinator for Corsa, which uh, in turn helps us in compliance with our getting, you know, our I call them rebates, but we get incentives if we we comply with certain requirements, and this is one. So <coughs> that to her. Um, I also have a letter to go along with Jamie's. I have a letter to the auditor's office. Um, they are working on getting her VIP set up for the HR portion and um, the auditor's office that had asked me to have you guys sign the authorization what uh, what we're requesting her have access to so we're ax asking for um, all administrative access deemed necessary for the functions of the human resource office including but not limited to uh, all components of the HR for all county office of you only no inputting or payroll, accrual reports, health insurance detail, benefit elections, uh, birth dates, hire date, termination date, salary amounts, check history, personnel information, job titles, etc. So she just wanted a letter signed from you guys for that. Okay. Um, I have a resolution appointing members to the Community Corrections Board. Um, and I'm not <coughs> sure, I don't have who was before, so I guess I can read through. Uh, chairperson is Judge uh, Mike Helbley. Um, the commissioner on the board is Mike Kirshner, Tim and Fostorian Municipal Judge, Mark Rep. Uh, the corrections representative is Dan King. Uh, the sheriff's representative is Sheriff Stevens. Uh, municipal police chief representative is the acting Chief Windsor. Uh, Seneca County prosecutor's representative is Derek Devine. Assistant County Prosecutor Representative is Stephanie Reed. JFS Prosecutor is Victor Perez. Uh, Mental Health and Recovery Services Executive Director or Designee will be Richie Andrew. Um, Executive Director Developmental Disabilities will be Lou Hurst. Uh, Halfway House and CBCF Administrator for the Corrections is Jason Varney. Um, the public representative is Eileen Geary. A victims of crime representative is Lydia Lee. Um, judiciary representative is Sergeant Ryan Mohan. Um, judiciary representative also Lisa Russell, Donna Ryder. Uh, common police court judge representative is Steve Schuff. Um, another judiciary representative is Jenny McClure and Lori Brickner. Corrections Representative Jaron Tice, uh, Director of Community Outreach Office of Court Services Jim, J Jim Jarrett, uh, the Corrections Representative Diane Nutter, Municipal Representative Aaron Motts, and that is the list. I don't think a lot of them had changed, but I didn't have the old resolution, so you just got to hear them all. <coughs> 
Um, I have a resolution <laughs> accepting the bid from Quest Group to uh, improve airport drainage and rehabilitation taxiway on behalf. That is the recommendation of our um, engineer. Their total bid amount was $650,614.80. Usually we do our um, <coughs> you know, accepting bid and enter into contract, but this needs to go to the FAA for approval before we can enter into contract. So we're just accepting the bid as recommended by the engineer, and uh, we will send that off to the FAA for, for approval. Along with that is the resolution authorizing the 20 the 21 FAA Airport Improvement Program grant application uh, for the airport drainage and rehabilitation taxiway at Seneca County Airport and authorizing Mike Kirshner, president of the board, to sign the application and all related documentation on behalf of the Seneca County Board of Commissioners. And I think there was one that was on the agenda that got removed. Um, I think it was a bus bid that did not provide the contract yet. So they thought they would have it to us and they didn't. So they pulled that off the agenda. And those are all I have. Okay. I will accept the motion for supplemental appropriations and the appointments um, and bid authorizations. So moved. I have a couple questions. Sure. All right. What kind of a second and we can discuss. Second. All right. There we go. Thank you. And, and I'm rusty up here. <laughs> so with uh, respect, with regards to uh, our human resource person, yes. are you satisfied that she has all the access. access and everything she needs? Hopefully with this, yes. She's doing, uh, uh, the auditor's <clears throat> office wanted this before. She met with Barb today. That way she could get the authorization in place. I'm guessing once Barb gets these put in, Jamie will see if there's anything else she's missing. And if we have to amend this letter, we will. But that's kind of why I added the including but not limited to. She just needs access to. OK, so the process, that's the process. Yep. yep. OK. Yep, they ask us for the. Yep. OK, and then I just want to make a comment with the airport bid. We're uh, very excited, very appreciative that um, we are getting this paid at 100%. Mm -hmm. And I understand we have a consultant, and I understand that the FAA out of Detroit will make the, you know, is going to make the final decision. But I did re receive a call from Brad Newman. He was not uh, involved in any of these discussions. So I think as a courtesy, not that it would have made a difference, what which direction we went but I would like to see our consultant communicate with him a little bit better we have the final say the consultant works for us mm -hmm. but uh, received a call he he didn't know anything about it so uh, they have to work together you know they're gonna have to schedule everything we're gonna, sure. we're gonna have to reroute planes and close the taxiway and so communication at that end, I'm sure they're all going to want Brad to cooperate, but I just think it would be a little better at the front end. We always involve Brad on everything. I think this is one that just slips through the cracks. Not a big deal, but I would like you to let our consultant know that. Sure. Okay? Yep. And so we have a second. Thanks. Mm -hmm. An additional discussion? Roll call. Uh, Commissioner Shaw. Yes. Mr. Cardiso? Yes. Mr. Gershman? Yes. Okay. It is time for public comment. Audrey, yes. <coughs> you're up. Uh, good morning. Good morning. All right. A couple things from us today. Um, last week I mentioned we were still trying to get the word out about the business grants where we had the 90,000 allocated specifically for Seneca County. That wasn't all used up yet. Um, there has since last week been additional funds put into that by the governor, not specifically allocated to our county, uh, but, our, but in that fund. So there's even more chance that businesses can still get that. So our office is continuing to try to reach out to as many businesses as possible and you know kind of advertise it. Um, but please you know let any businesses know. Shoot, the four categories are um, entertainment venue, uh, food and beverage establishment, new business that was started after the 1st of 2020, and I'm going to have to remember the third one real quick. Um, sorry about that. Oh, um, 
yeah, sorry, I can't remember the other one. <laughs> anyway, so if you know businesses that fall within those categories, please uh, directly reach out and try to let them know. Um, next thing, so we, TSA will have a booth at the fair next week, so come see us. We're going to try to, you know, be more visible, get the word out more about what we're doing, and make ourselves more, you know, accessible to the community, so stop out and see our table. Um, you say, is it SIEDC that has a booth? TSEP, yeah, our office, yep. Okay, good. Yes, um, yeah, that's where us. are you going to be, do you know? Yeah, we're going to be right near the fair office, uh, kind of between the fair office and the track. So okay. come see me. I'll be there all week. <laughs> Need somebody to talk to. Um, Dick wanted to let you all know there's still money in the inclusion grant. Um, that's a pretty narrow, specific grant um, against uh, targeting certain specific industries and um, with a component of uh, kind of, un, um, you know, marginalized you know uh, veterans or minority owned those type of things uh, but also for growth within specific uh, target industries uh, a lot of times it'll be things like machine shops or um, bigger type industries like that we have had several businesses in the county access that but there's still funds in there so nick is willing to help any business get into that program um, more kind of commercial industrial type businesses in there if you will but reach out to him for that um, we had two announcements since last week. Uh, Tyler mentioned Yours With Every Stitch, which is in the Laird. Amy's excited to have another downtown business, one that's kind of unique and different, so go check her out. And then we also had Tiffin Foundry announced uh, an expansion of their business um, as well. With and, and they also are getting one of those inclusion grants that I mentioned as well. So they worked with, uh, with Nick and Jobs Ohio um, to get that. So that's a really cool announcement as well. Um, I just wanted to let you know, our teammate that was here last week, Karina, is having a great onboarding. Um, if you're watching, Karina, hello. Um, it's going great. We really appreciate everyone's support to help bring her on board because it's very helpful for me. I'm, I'm able to have a little more bandwidth now. Um, let's see. I think those were everything I had for you all today. Do you have any questions for TSAP right now? Oh, and obviously we're, we're also working with to uh, Tony to bring the, the broadband group together. So that's on our agenda as well for you. Anything else? I got a quick question, Audrey. On the uh, grant you was talking about, so uh, I assume it's the whole county has potential to be able to... The uh, inclusion one or the other? The other, yeah, the one that you had like three or four. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, the whole county. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then how encumbersome is the paperwork and stuff for that? That's a good question. Um, I would say I think somewhere in the middle from those who I've talked to, not, um, you know, maybe the shortest one ever, but definitely not super complicated, and our office can help people through it. We also have a webinar on our website that directs you, you know, how to go through the application process, where to go to, who the contacts are that can help answer questions, um, and our staff is happy to assist businesses as well, so we'll try to make it as easy as possible. Very good. That's yep. a lot of issues with grants is you just burn a lot of time doing that, and you don't know where you're going to end up yep. with it, so it's yep. great. It's a lot easier than some of That's a great point. Did your office do a press release on that or have, have like a link? Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's on our Facebook, on our website, all that kind of things. But we are going to try to do another push this week on it as well. Now that we know there's more, plenty of funds available. Mm -hmm. so. You need to find it. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Wait. You guys will have me from extension. Um, fair week is upon us. Woohoo. I don't know about you guys, I'm excited. <laughs> it's like the, the calm before the storm. Uh, I, I, I'm about to head out to the fairgrounds and run Skeleton for the rest of the day. So you it'll go be to Wood County Fair with all the animals. Yeah, there, yeah. You would go to Wood, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Just wondering. Yes, we were very, very competitive there. My, uh, I joke with my family, I have three other siblings. All of us have H names, so we were commonly referred to as the four H's. So, <laughs> very, very cheesy four H family, but all all of us kids, family. yeah, all all of us kids now work in agriculture too. That we're we're very blessed. So, yeah. it's good. Um, with extension, I've been really busy out on farms doing research. Um, a lot of our um, invasive species in our uh, agronomic crops and whatnot are on those lower levels right now so hopefully we will keep steady with that but we're still monitoring those across all of our ag crops um, soybeans bean or sorry soybeans corn and then also on our pepper weevil we're doing a big pepper weevil trial up with uh, Ken Hack and, and Weir's up uh, by Old Fort area so it's taking a lot of time but a really good uh, research that's really helping the community and other uh, producers uh, throughout Northwest Ohio or sorry Northern Ohio um, with that, we're also uh, keeping track on our bean and our corn yields. Uh, what we're seeing, especially with all this added rain that we had this past week, we're seeing some damage 
on a lot of different crops, seeing some molds, those sort of things, and trying to see how can we get through that? Do we need to do some testing? Do we need to add extra nutrients? Most of the time it's no, it's now it's a waiting game. Let's see what happens at the end of the season and let's hope that our yields bounce back and everything. <coughs> um, aside from uh, that, I also wanted to remind people we are getting some calls still about uh, the bird issue that we have going on. Uh, ODA is still recommending please do not be filling your bird feeders right now. Um, that where that bird illness is still going on and so they're still recommending do not fill your uh, bird baths or your bird feeders. Keep those put up for right now. Birds do not need any supplemental feed, uh, feeding during the summer, in the winter more so, but until we get that go ahead, please still make sure that you're not putting out anything. Um, aside from that, we have the farmer's market uh, this Saturday, so come out and visit us and then have a big week at fair all this next week. Uh, we will be there periodically doing a little bit of anything and everything, uh, but our office will still be open all week long. So if you have questions, concerns about uh, home issues, garden issues, whatever, uh, farm issues, feel free to give us a call. We'll, we'll take your calls and hopefully be out and help you guys the best way possible. Um, our nutrition education, our SNAP Ed program are still, uh, they're running full steam doing programming. They are able to do cooking demonstrations in, uh, in their classes as well. So if uh, any organizations are working with a lower income SNAP eligible population, they are also eligible to contact our office and we can provide nutrition education. Right. How's that program going with the SNAP and the <laughs> farmer's market? How's that? Uh, yeah, so with our SNAP education programs, that's more of a series program. So uh, that works best when working with um, groups of populations where we can have that, re that uh, return group over and over. But they are doing outreach at the farmer's market with us as well. What are you asking about our intake of SNAP oh. usage at the market? Yeah, I was wondering, is that taking off or any numbers? Or, I mean, is it, is yeah, it, no, it uh, it's actually going really well. Um, we are having some good redemption on our senior farmer's market nutrition assistance uh, vouchers. We're seeing a fair amount of those. And WIC, uh, we had a big WIC day, our last market, and so we had a fair amount of those come through. SNAP is still going steady. We're seeing anywhere from $100, $200. It kind of depends, especially uh, throughout each month in how families are issued um, their SNAP funds and their cards. So some families get them at the very beginning of the month, some get them at mid-month, um, but it is taking off. Um, there's a lot of people who are coming to the market and saying, oh, we didn't know that you guys offer this. So it's still trending. Um, I think yeah. that this is gonna be a big issue, or, or sorry, a big benefit to the community for many years to come, but it will take a while for customers to get <clears throat> used to uh, the accessibility and the, the fact that we're regularly there. And hopefully we'll expand the market even more so that you know we'd be there even more regularly. So what takes off yeah you know. yeah the, the, is the extension sponsoring a volunteer program some sort of a nature volunteer are you thinking sisters maybe mm, st francis not necessarily we have the master gardener program yeah not that someone approached me <laughs> about um do the extension office mm -hmm. which is you yeah some uh, volunteer program I don't, I not don't understand. It's uh, nature. I think I know what you're talking about. Okay. There's a certified, uh, I, it's another acronym, and I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's actually technically run through Parks and Services, parks. but it's a certified uh, yeah. uh, nature volunteer. It's very similar to Master Gardeners, but it's more focused on. To give tours resources. and Okay. I think so, yes, but they would. That would uh, be parks? Par yeah, Parks and yeah. Recs are running uh, okay. that program right now. Right. Some some extension offices run that, and sometimes it just depends on who establishes the program first. Someone called actually asked me for to be a reference. Oh, really? So they could apply to be a volunteer. Oh, good, wonderful. <laughs> it's a so, those programs are very but, intensive. They have to do a lot of hours in both community uh, community service and education. So, uh, but they've uh, taken that model for master gardeners, and so it's really neat to see how that's expanding out. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you guys. very much. Good to have you. Hopefully, I'll see you guys out at the fair plenty. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any comments out there, Jimmy? Yep. I uh, just want to remind people if you're joining us on Facebook Live that you'll need to go over to the Zoom call to be able to participate. But at this time, we can open it up to anybody who is online through Zoom who'd like to make a public comment. Okay. I. 
don't see anyone wishing to make any comment, so uh, it is 11.04, and we are adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you.